You might've heard this term, treat your lubricants as assets. And on the surface, sounds like a fantastic idea. And then you start to think about it a little bit more and go, what does that actually mean? And I've had this question posed to me by a number of my customers. So when I've said to them, you need to start treating your lubricants as assets, they've often returned serve and said, well, what exactly do you mean by that? I actually put this question to the LinkedIn community a week ago, and I got a lot of very detailed and thoughtful responses, which mostly amounted to, let's not treat our lubricants as consumables. We should see them as having inherent value. And that, that means that we should you know, treat them in a different way. It's about, it's about a mindset shift. And that's all really good answers. But I find that when I'm speaking to my customers in the industrial world, that's not concrete enough for them. So here's my attempt at explaining what it truly means to treat your lubricants as assets. Just a quick note before we get started. I've never asked anyone to subscribe on this channel. I'm not about to ask you to. What I am gonna ask is if you find this helpful, could you please share it with a colleague who may not know anything about the channel? I've heard feedback that it's a really good resource and a really good way to instruct people that are new to the business. So if you know someone who would benefit from watching this channel and watching these videos, please share it. Most people that come into contact with lubricants think of it as being just the lubricant, the oil or grease that goes into the machine. I would argue that for people in our profession, it's actually three very distinct disciplines. You've got the actual lubricant itself, there is the use of that lubricant, and then there is the analysis of that lubricant. So in other words, you have the lubricant, the lubrication, and lubricant analysis. So why the three disciplines? So we have the lubricants, which are the oil, grease, metalworking fluid, assembly paste, cleaner, solvent, what have you, that is in use, right? Then you have the act of using those products. And that's what we would term lubrication. So that's storage and handling, it's contamination control, all of that sort of stuff in terms of using the lubricant. And then you have the analysis of that lubricant, which is you know, either you know, inline sampling or, or taking samples and sending them to the lab, which is gathering data, which enables us then to get insights into the performance of the lubricant. And maybe that feeds back into decisions about what lubricant we are going to choose next time around, right? or optimizing use of the lubricant, or maybe changing our lubrication practices and our strategy. The reason why it's helpful to think of lubricants in these three separate disciplines is because it really lines up with how we treat our assets. So if you think of a, a mechanical asset like a gas turbine, we have the machine, that is the gas turbine or the asset. We have the act of operating and maintaining that asset, and then we collect data on the operation and maintenance of that asset to better inform how we operate and maintain the asset. Maybe that data is then used to collect on performance, which might feed back into our procurement decisions about the next gas turbine that we buy. In a similar way, we have lubricants, which is analogous to the asset. We have lubrication, which is the act of operating and maintaining our lubricants. And then we have lubricant analysis, which is the act of collecting data on our lubricants. So now you can very clearly see that with these three different disciplines, it's the exactly like operating and maintaining an asset. Now, the cool thing about lubricants and the reason why I try to really um, push the importance of them with my customers is that lubricants is one of those rare disciplines where we get to play jump rope with this line because lubrication is also the act of operating and maintaining the machine and lubricant analysis uniquely is also able to give us data about the operation and state of the machine. So for example, in lubricant analysis, we can do uh, wear debris analysis. We can look at filter gram and ferrogram. We can look at filter debris analysis and give us a, a degree of the health of the machine. So when I say treat your lubricants like assets, this is what I personally mean. Now, the next obvious question is, well, that's great, Rafe. Okay, you said treat my lubricants as assets. Uh, there is an asset management standard called ISO 55000. But when I search ISO 55000 for mentions of lubricants and lubrication, there's nothing, right? And that's because the ISO 55000 standard is, is very high level. We're talking about the management of physical assets, things like brand assets, corporate assets, government assets, right? It has to be a, a very generic standard. Helpfully though, in our specific industry, we have a document called ICML 55. 
So the International Council of Machinery Lubrication has put forth these standards. Now, 55.1 and 55.2 are going to be the most useful because 55.0 is mostly like definitions and stuff. But what they do is they take all of the principles of ISO 55000 and they say, well, what would it mean to treat your lubricants and your lubrication program in line with the philosophy of ISO 55000? And I think this is a fantastic body of work. Now, it's split up into these 12 interrelated areas of a lubrication program plan, right? And you can go through these documents and take all of the best practices from these documents. This is a fantastic resource for anyone who uses lubricants, so that's pretty much any sort of industrial business, to be able to benchmark yourself against best practice and sort of elevate your program to a world-class level. Now, I've had some feedback from some customers who found it all a little bit overwhelming to go through you know, a 250-page document that has 12 different elements. Okay, if that's you, then I've tried to distill these elements down into six very easy to remember steps. So there is select, detect, inspect, protect, connect, and reflect. Now, hopefully these are pretty intuitive, but selection is all around selection of lubricants, selection of suppliers, and selection of accessories that enable lubrication. Detect is all about your condition monitoring tools. How are we able to detect failures before they occur? As you could guess, inspect is all about daily inspections, PMs and work orders. Uh, how are you doing your lube routing? Protect is protection of people, the environment, and the lubricant. So it entails things like contamination control. Connect is all about how are you connecting with best practice around the world and how are you training your people eff effectively. And Reflect is all about what are your program KPIs and sort of the metrics, what is the RCFAs that you might do when there's a failure, and how does that feed back to better inform your lubrication program. If you want to very quickly assess the state of your current lubrication program, I'll have a link down in the comments below, which will take you to a questionnaire and that will enable you to very, very quickly assess your program against these six dimensions.